It's a bull. Hey, good morning. What's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Uh, man, the coin's a bull today. You know, I tried the old coin. I went back to the old coin again because the old coin kept pulling up bulls all the time. And I did the new coin, and the new coin's pulling up bulls all the time, almost coming up bull every time. I think it's trying to tell us something, folks. Maybe it's not working on a daily basis. Maybe my coin's just trying to tell me overall what's happening. No less, look at this view here in uh, the Deerfield Beach live cam. Isn't that cool? I mean, the water clarity is just awesome. There's so many different types of fish. Um, I could do a half-hour video just on this. <laughs> oh, and as most of you know, and probably some of you already got this bookmarked here, it's a great site. It's the live Deerfield Beach underwater cam. Uh, sorry about repeating myself, but most of you folks that watch my show, you got to realize we got some new peeps here, and I'd like to keep them informed of what I do. Oh, look at that snow right there too oh my gosh just kind of meandering around down there by the bait those are delicious fish when they're in season and they are a mofo to catch uh wow gosh darn i should do a fishing show <laughs> oh boy well let's move into spot prices right here and uh wow 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 wow, wow. <clears throat> totally unexpected by myself here uh, and I think it has something to do with the uh, GDP and the unemployment reports coming out this morning. Things are not as rosy as they expected. Uh, we've been talking about this for a while, but still, I expected a dead cat bounce, and I expected the rest of the year we'd see some decent numbers coming out of, uh, you know, un you know, employment numbers and all that stuff. You know, GDP. Uh, you know, again, dead cat bounce after being closed for a year. I figured we'd see at least a year of this. Uh, however, uh, things are looking a little funky out there and maybe uh, not so good as I expected uh, at this point. You know, again, I expect bad things to happen. Not, you know, I don't hope bad things happen. I just kind of expect it. And it's not my fault. If I ran the whole world, if I was king of the world, um, everyone would be happy. <laughs> so, no, but seriously, uh, 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 I don't... You know, when you make boneheaded decisions, when you make stupid decisions and uh, uh, you do stupid things, uh, you know, you got to expect the results from that. And that's kind of what we've been seeing for quite some time here. Um, the results from boneheaded, stupid decisions made by, uh, well, you know who they're made by, uh, the people that are in power. Uh, let's take a look at market here, 1807 overnight. I suspect that 1807 was from uh, uh, last night. Uh, probably, and uh, this is probably this morning. I did not look this morning, uh, uh, unfortunately. Uh, usually, I look first thing in the morning when I get up. I take a look at markets, but this morning I did not, so I can't tell you uh, when this 1828 kicked in. But I suspect, I suspect uh, that the unemployment figures came out at 8:30 a.m. this morning. And uh, some of you that were watching can take a look, or I'm sure there's an archive of this. Uh, but I suspect that the 1828 figure really happened this morning. Uh, again, I don't know if it happened last night, but I kind of doubt it. Uh, we're the high was 1828.69. I, again, I suspect that happened after the unemployment figures came out this morning, the GDP figures came out. Uh, we'll read into that a little bit more here in a few moments. Uh, but now we're sitting uh, almost near that high within 10 or over uh, within a dollar 10 of that high uh, that we saw probably this morning. Uh, silver, same thing, 25 bucks. That was probably from yesterday. And uh, 25.63 again. I'm sus I suspect I haven't looked at this happened again after 8:30 when New York opened. I don't think it happened in the overnight markets, uh, although I can't tell you for sure. And uh, platinum up uh, as well, uh, 10.82, uh, but not down a little bit more, 10.69. But we're up overall. That's a good thing. Uh, so we're looking good here with uh, metals right now. Kind of unexpected. I thought we were going to see doldrums here for the you know for a little while at least. However, you know as I said, you're going to wake up one morning. And is this the morning you're going to wake up and go, oh, your jaw's going to... I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but uh, you're going to wake up one morning and uh, markets are just going to be absolutely crazy. I don't consider this crazy at the moment, but uh, it is probably a, uh, you know, a canary in the coal mine here, uh, especially this time of year, seeing up prices like this. Uh, I suspect a lot has to do with the data. What data was that? Um, <clears throat> well, let's take a look at a few things right here uh, before I get into that. Uh, the FOMC just told the world to buy gold, uh, more or less, and this is by uh, VBL. Uh, Mr. VBL does a lot of charts and things like that, which is pretty cool. And what does he say here? What's in there? there are several active drivers in the market as we write. First, the FOMC meeting 
which on the surface of it had no real surprise policy-wise. The Fed made it clear that their intentions were to eventually taper, but they wouldn't be raising rates. It also created a permanent overnight repo facility for the U.S. and foreign entities. The market interpreted it on balance as bear on the U.S. dollar. So basically, you know, and, and again, take a look and think about that real quick. Uh, the Fed made it clear that their intentions were to eventually taper, but they would not be raising rates. So they just came right out and said it. They're not going to be raising rates, and they're going to eventually... Uh, uh, <coughs> You know uh, they're going to eventually start tapering uh, and creating a permanent overnight repo facility for the U.S. dollar, U.S. and foreign entities. Uh, that's a sign on the wall uh, saying that they don't expect things to go away anytime soon. In fact, I don't think they expect a fix. They're just kind of in like in wait mode. Uh, they're not panicking. They're in wait mode to see which direction they need to head. Uh, again, these are not dumb people. The Fed. Uh, they're pace basically just uh, sticking band-aids on the Titanic right now, and they're doing a pretty damn good job of it so far. But at one point, some point, it's going to blow up in their faces. The world's smartest people are going to have this market blow up on them. Uh, and usually, what they do is they pass it along to other people. Their vaults are full of gold. Why do you think central banks keep pumping gold into their vaults? Why they keep pumping that fiat paper into your pockets, my pockets, and the pockets of the people around us? Uh, so I digress again. I'm good at digressing. Uh, the market interpreted on balance as bearish for the U.S. dollar. Well, no shit. Uh, not you, Vince, but no shit. Uh, that's true. Other drivers are China activity to bolster their own stock markets and their announcement that they would release more metals from strategic reserves to keep uh, prices in check domestically. Well, yeah, for those of you who haven't followed this, uh, my videos here, I've talked about it quite a few times in the last few months. China, uh, when they started to see uh, prices of uh, aluminum, iron, and what is it, copper, uh, started to go up dramatically, China says, no, 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 we're going to step in and release strategic supplies that we have uh, and lower the price and uh, go in and uh, uh, regulate these prices downward. That's their method of uh, tamping down inflation, except <clears throat> it doesn't work in the rest of the world. Uh, now, hold on. Let me let me re restate that. I believe our government does the same thing. Uh, the president's working group. I believe that uh, uh, the, the, our government goes in and has uh, uh, financial entities like JP. Now, this is my opinion, and other entities, and the opinions of people way smarter than me. So I didn't make this up. Uh, uh, so they, they have these uh, uh, companies go in and they have these uh, uh, companies uh, monkey hammer the price down of these metals. And uh, we know they've been doing it with gold and silver. We know that's a government entity doing this, uh, and using uh, uh, JP and maybe these short positions and these other companies to uh, monkey hammer gold and silver down. Uh, but the Chinese do it right in the open, right in your face. They don't care. Hey, we're the Chinese communists. What do we care? <laughs> they, they do it right in our in their in their faces, and they're pretty opaque and open about it. Um, is that the way you should do business? No, you can't control markets like that. You have to let markets. It's called free cap. You know, free market system. You got to let prices go where they need to go. You got to let people bid on the stuff. You got to let demand settle the price. Not. Uh, uh, governments or uh, uh, corporate entities, uh, no less. Uh, uh, it'll 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 blow up in their faces for sure. And uh, our government obviously does it the opposite way. They manipulate these markets. They absolutely do. They deny it, and they do it behind closed doors. So who's better, the people that do it in your face and let you know they do it, or the people that do it behind closed doors? I'm not going to say who's better. I'm just going to say that. Both of them are wrong. You can't manipulate prices in a free market system. Uh, otherwise, it will eventually blow up in your face, and that's what's going to happen here. Uh, let's move along here. Uh, other drivers, China, okay, I talked about that. Uh, on the balance, the actions and behaviors of yesterday are extremely significant, even if not a headline grabbing. We feel it raises the floor on our gold and silver and provides a structural tailwind for global dissemination of inflation. Uh, Vince, I agree with you 100% here. I think you're exactly right. Uh, he talks about the fiat graveyard, how reserve currencies have changed over 120 years. Um, a lot of stuff that we've talked about for a long time, folks. Gold technicals, let's see. Uh, okay, he, he's a chart guy, so this is kind of what he's saying. I'm writing from this. And now, of course, I'm going to tell you anything below $2,000 gold is cheap. Just buy it. But I think uh, Vince talks to people that do day trading, uh, which is something I know nothing about when it comes to trading gold and silver. I wouldn't even get into it or uh, mess with it. It's just not my ballywick. Uh, but uh, Vince is t saying, uh, uh, from a daily, uh, from a trade point, from a uh, if you're a day trader, uh, a higher call get long above 1825. 
and uh, buy against uh, into 1812. So he's raised that uh, uh, bar a little bit from what I saw earlier in the week, but that makes sense. Uh, that's what the chart guys do. They they read the map on where they've been and they take a guess at where it's going. Uh, so, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. And uh, let's move along to some other uh, articles here. Uh, coffee crushes gold and silver. That's a pretty uh, portfolio armor, I guess. They're a, uh, again, day traders or something like that. And they probably got some good advice. Coffee made some good gains. But would you hold coffee as a preservation of wealth? No. Uh, these guys are uh, uh, day, day traders. So, you know, my suggestion to you folks, unless you uh, have someone that gives you great advice and is a pretty much a winner in day trading <clears throat> or you're a day trade expert yourself, stay away from that market. Um, it's a, Yeah, it's a good way to get hammered. Let's see, unless it's like casino money, you know, you've got an extra, you know, a couple thousand or 10,000 or whatever you may have to play around with. Uh, but I advise, like you do with gold and silver markets, you need to learn what you're doing, learn who the players are, learn how the game is played, and learn how it's manipulated. Uh, and then you can win. Uh, moment Wall Street has been waiting for. Uh, I this is a friend of mine on social media, Charles Hugh Smith, super smart guy. I recommend that you uh, uh, put his stuff on your bookmark bar too. Uh, his website is called uh, uh, Charles. Well, you can click it right here. Well, you can't click it on my <laughs> video YouTube, but if you type in uh, "of two minds uh, blog" uh, by Charles Hugh Smith, it'll pop up. And uh, basically, he makes a very good case right now that uh, uh, retail is all in, in the stock market right now. And I'll just do a quick read of the top thing. All hands on Wall Street have been wary of being bearish for one reason, and no, it's not the Federal Reserve. The old hands have been waiting for retail, the individual investor, to go all in on stocks. After 13 years, the moment has finally arrived. Retail is all in. If you doubt this, just look at record highs in investor sentiment, margin debt, and the Buffett indicator. And uh, Charles makes a very good case right now that, um, and, and this is a good indication too, that this market, stock market, is ready to blow up. I mean, it's ready to take a big shit. Um, and, and will it make 2008 look like a, uh, an amateur? Uh, you know, the 2008 collapse? And will it make it look small? Yeah, it probably will. You know, because this bubble has done, it's never been fixed. It's just gotten bigger and bigger since 2008. Uh, so he points out, Charles uh, uh, Smith, Hugh, I'm sorry, uh, Charles Hugh Smith uh, point makes a very good point here that investor sentiment's at an all-time high. Typically, uh, this indicates that uh, it's ready to take a dump. Uh, I have my own surefire indicators when retail is all in. One of my mom's financial advisors recommended her. Now, he gives some really cool stories how here, uh, how in the past uh, uh, bubbles, uh, uh, all the so-called experts have made big mistakes and put people in the wrong thing. And uh, it's really good, good, good read here. So uh, do yourself a favor. Uh, even if you're not invested in stocks, you're just gold and silver, take a read on this because this has an effect on precious metals. If the stock and bond market win, not if, when it takes the giant dump. Uh, again, as I said, you're going to see gold and silver go down dramatically, but that'll be a paper move only. You won't be able to buy physical at those levels. Uh, maybe Perhaps we can make a paper trade. I'll let you know at that time if you watch my videos. Uh, uh, you know, again, I'm not against making money legally on the terms that they've set, so uh, I'm not adverse to jumping into a paper market uh, if, if, you know, if I need to temporarily, if it's solid or I think it's solid, uh, but no less. Uh, um, we're going to take this market's going to take a giant dump at some point, and it's going to uh, affect precious metals. It's going to affect uh, people's lives in general. Uh, so definitely read the moment Wall Street has been waiting for. Retail is all in, or you can read it on his site. Uh, I recommend that you bookmark his site, uh, Charles Hugh Smith Off Two Minds Blog. Good read, folks. And uh, let's see what else we got going on in ZH today. A lot more news than yesterday, or actually the whole week. Uh, China shorts crushed as retail investors plunge protection team. Another good article, probably. Uh, won't go into that. Did not read it. Sorry about that. Uh, can't argue with Ted on this right here. And what else do we got going on? Uh, China syndrome of Taperton. Initial, here we go. Initial jobless claims disappoint as the number of Americans on the dole rises back above 13 million. So I think uh, uh, what we've got here going on, what we've got here is a failure to communicate. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw a cool hand Luke the other night. It was on Turner or T. What is it? Uh, the Turner Network, or whatever the heck it was. Uh, what a great movie, still to this day. And uh, uh, sorry, but I don't know where I came up with that. My mind kind of goes sideways sometimes. Uh, initial jobless claims that disappoint as the number of Americans on the dole rise back above 13 million. So that was this morning's news at 8:30. Again, I wasn't up to see what time uh, the gold price and silver price went way. You know, took took a hike up. Uh, I suspect it was after these numbers came out. 
Uh, again, I'm taking a guess there, uh, but that is not good. Uh, I think uh, the, I think the expectation were was that the uh, jobless claims would be up. Uh, I mean, uh, up down. Um, and uh, that's not the case here, and that's actually not a good sign. Uh, I expected a bigger dead cat bounce, and I think what we might be getting here, and if that's the case, this is pretty bad, folks. Uh, let's move along to the next news this morning. GDP is a huge miss. Economy grew 6.5% in Q2, far below the 85 expected on a surprise inventory drop. So, uh, whew, yeah, there's another, uh, again, this is kind of like uh, black swan uh, news, uh, black swan events that have not made the news. They're kind of tiny black swans, baby black swans, uh, but they, they indicate a lot. And they, as I said, Gold is a canary in the gold mine. This is why gold is way up this morning, uh, and uh, people should take note. Uh, GDP, huge miss. Economy grew uh, uh, less, 2% less than what they expected, and usually they underestimate their expectations a little bit, so uh, uh, that's not good. As I said, this dead cat bounce might be over already. Uh, that being the case, I don't know what's going to happen throughout the rest of the summer and fall here. Um, Michael Pinto, first in disfla disinflation, then deflation, then big time inflation. Uh, interesting article. I didn't read this, but uh, not too much here. More I'm going to go into. I want to move over to GATA.org. Uh, definitely some cool articles in Zero Hedge. It's free if you want to read it. No charge. You got to get the ads. I have the uh, premium service that I pay a dollar a day for, or something like that, or whatever dollar a week, whatever the heck it is. Uh, worth it for me, though. I, I can't stand the ads that pop up. Uh, but no less, uh, uh, ZH provides a great uh, different uh, viewpoints and different opinions on, on markets, on uh, politics and all that stuff. Uh, and for people that have half a brain, you can pick your choices rather than corporate uh, news, which gives you one narrative only. Uh, and again, that's why I like ZH and other type sites like that. Uh, let's move into GATA.org, the people that, if you're new listening to my show, for the rest of you guys that uh, listen to my show all the time, you can fast forward through GATA.org because I am hoping and I suspect that you've already read these articles because this is uh, on your bookmark bar up here. Uh, for those of you who are new to this show or don't have GATA.org uh, uh, bookmarked on your uh, bookmark bar, <laughs> a lot of bookmarks here, um, you need to do that. Uh, this is the people that tell you uh, how the market is, how the game is manipulated, who the manipulators are, how it's played, uh, who the I mean, all kinds of great stuff. Read this first. Again, if you're new to this, uh, uh, my videos here, you need to read this. Bookmark this site and uh, be reading it before I even get to it. So <laughs> uh, that's my homework for you. Uh, real quickly, we're going to go over here. Palisades Radio Interviews, Ted Butler. I don't, I've don't. i never listened to Palisades Gold Radio Interviews. Uh, maybe some of you have. Um, I know only because a lot of it's filled with, uh, well, you know, all of us, including myself. I'm advertising for my business here. Uh, so, you know, it's not completely altruistic. Is that the right word to use? Uh, so I'm here to do business as well. But, uh, you know, for me to listen to other guys uh, <laughs> trying to do business is a little bit tougher. Uh, but no less, they do probably a great interview. Whatever interview Ted Butler does is really good. Um, didn't Again, didn't uh, uh, listen to it myself. Maybe I will later on because I do like Ted Butler that much. He's the guy that, uh, uh, he's the godfather of uh, market manipulation. I'm not creating it, but pointing it out. He's been talking about this for years, decades, um, I think he's the smartest man out there when it comes to the manipulation of the silver and gold markets. Uh, and it's definitely an interview you probably should uh, listen to. And uh, let's t what is the interview about? I'm not, I don't know, and I can't tell you, and we're not going to listen to it right now. But kind of, if you want to make this your homework, you can. Uh, Butler says refuse to act against banks concentrated short positions. Oh, he's talking about the regulators again, uh, refusing to do anything. And that's, uh, that's typical par for the course. Uh, regulators are in bed with uh, these guys. Uh, in my opinion. Uh, debt will explode financial system and boost metals, commodities, steer tails. Uh, well, we know that. And uh, again, probably another really good article to read here. Um, let's see here. Read more. Let me see if there's anything I can just kind of comment on. Uh, commodity prices, steer says, have been suppressed by derivatives for 50 years, but the debt is going to explode. The financial system will force an upward reevaluation of monetary metals and commodities. Uh, the Sprott Physical Fund. Okay. Uh, this is kind of an advertising for Sprott again, uh, and uh, stuff that we've rehashed a hundred times over, but you can read it if you'd like to. Uh, Ronan Manley talks about the Venezuelans 31 tons of gold at the Bank of England. 
Um, as you know, if you've been listening to my videos, we've talked about this news flash that's been going on for a little while. Venezuelans been requesting their, uh, quite actually a couple years or more, I think. Uh, Venezuelans uh, been asking for their gold back. Uh, UK is making, the, the London uh, Bullion Bank is making uh, excuses uh, UK is making excuses why they can't return this gold, saying, well, your elections weren't legit. Now, come on, folks, you know that's bullshit. Uh, I suspect that there's a billion dollars worth of gold Venezuela wants back, and you, I can't blame them for wanting it back. Um, however, it has nothing to do with the election. It probably has to do with the UK doesn't have the billion dollars worth of physical gold to return. They probably don't have it. Uh, and if they do have it, giving it back would put them in dire financial issues as far as that part of their market goes. I think there's a lot of uh, uh, monkey business going on in London as far as gold and the LMBA. As long as, long as our, uh, excuse me, I'm going to take a sip of coffee here, as well as our comics too. So, hmm, sorry about that. My throat kind of dried up there a little bit. Uh, so uh, I think this is not a matter of uh, uh, them worried about uh, whether the elections were legit. And, and then give me a break, too. The U.K. doesn't give a shit whether elections are legit. They just don't want to give back that gold, period, because either A, they don't have it, or B, uh, it'll cause a major issue for them. Uh, that's the truth. Uh, at least my opinion of it. <laughs> uh, Brandon White, gold confiscation, the juice isn't worth a squeeze. I'm not even going to read it. I'm going to, well, you know, that wouldn't be fair to the guy that wrote it. Um, in other Western countries, isn't likely a GAT and his old friend uh, Ben writes this week because the public owns too little of the monetary metal to make confiscation profitable. I, ah, that's, God, that's a video I've done uh, a couple times. Actually, I did a whole video on confiscation, and uh, uh, basically what he's saying right here, I've said a couple times, is that, you know, there will be no gold confiscation, folks. For you folks out there that are afraid that the government's going to come and take your gold, we're here to get your gold. <laughs> it's nonsense. It's bullshit. I'll tell you why. And, and any dealer or anybody that, any dealer, when a dealer tells you, talks about confiscation, if you go to a dealer in precious metals and they start telling you, well, you need to buy this because it won't be confiscated by the government, hightail your ass out of that place because that is full of shit. Uh, whether the guy's purposely doing it or he's just an ignoramus, that's full of shit. Uh, they are not going to come and confiscate your gold, folks, um, period. We're not, number one, as Peter Schiff pointed out many years ago, that was a very good point, we're not on the gold standard any longer. There's no legal reason for them to confiscate your gold, none. So, uh, more or less, that means that uh, uh, they're, not, they're just not going to confiscate your gold. And the, and the other thing that he points out here, and I pointed out many times uh, myself personally when I thought about it, is what are they going to do? Knock on everyone's door, get teams of people to go out and find this gold and, and go through uh, dealers' records to look for addresses and knock on doors like, like uh, 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 stormtroopers? No, folks. It would cost them way more to do that. And most Americans... Most of your brothers and sisters out there and your aunts and your uncles and your grandparents, they don't own gold. Most of them don't. very small percentage of America does. And this is why when the next downturn in the economy hits, it is going to be very painful for people around us. They don't own gold and silver. They're heavily involved in 401ks or stock markets, their retirement funds. And if that takes a crap on them, all they've got to rely on is Social Security and government checks. I kind of think that's where we're going. I kind of think that the uh, socialists in our uh, uh, in our government currently up in Washington, D.C. are pushing for a financial collapse so that they can start putting out checks on their MMT theory. But again, I digress here. Uh, I don't trust these fuckers, though, and you shouldn't either. Uh, excuse my language, but it's true. And uh, where else do we go from here? Eh, that's really about it for today's news. Good update, though. I got to tell you, Nice day here. Let's just take a look and see if it's up a little bit higher. Let me do a quick refresh on that screen. Excuse me one second. And uh, yes, it is. Woohoo! My gosh, what is going on? Oh boy, this can be the coin was absolutely right, but I think the coin's been showing me a bull every day. But I think the coin knows more about the future than I do. Uh, not today necessarily, or tomorrow, but the future. Uh, let's move along to yesterday. Man, markets are way up today. Uh, let's move along to uh, today's, yesterday's video, fi not fixed, broke more. I was very disappointed with the views yesterday, but you know what? I can't focus on that. 
<laughs> and you know what? It's funny thing is, is uh, content was really good yesterday. I've done some shows where the content, I'm sorry, I'll admit it, sometimes I'm off, I don't have a good day. Uh, you know, maybe I had too much wine the night before, didn't drink my coffee in the morning, but uh, I've had some uh, videos I've done where I thought the content was awful, and I like call Marcelo, who does my editing, I said, Marcelo, I'm sorry. <laughs> he goes, no, just go with it, it's daily, do your best, and that's what I do. Uh, but I've had some shows that I, I thought were very subpar that I got huge views on. I mean, I just, I just don't get it. And then I get these shows like yesterday where I thought, hey, great content, Marcelo. This is going to be a good one. And I get low views. Don't ask me why. And as always, I digress. I like that word, digress, because I do it so often. Uh, let's look at yesterday's video, uh, fixed, uh, not fixed, broke more. And uh, I'd like to thank all the folks here that... Uh, 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 watch my videos. Uh, uh, Sam G. Uh, 2008 was major deleveraging. Paper metals will suffer if another crisis hits. I like it that my uh, my commenters and the people that watch my videos are very smart. Um, Silver Retard says, <laughs> wow, you sure do have a lot of hate in your voice when you say Jamie Diamond. No, I think I said Jamie Demon. Uh, I call him Jamie Demon and his band of effing pirates. Uh, you know what? Anger? I don't know. Uh, hate? No, hate for sure not. I'm not hateful of anybody. If uh, Jamie Demon came in and, and, and I met him in person, I disagree with him. I mean, I disagree, not with him necessarily, but I disagree with a lot of these people. But I got to tell you, maybe, maybe a little bit anger, not hate. Anger only because these guys are too big to fail and too big to jail. Um, and they cause people uh, a, a lot. They cost the smaller guys a lot of money. They just, the big whales just eat the small fish. And uh, that's who Jamie Demon and his band of pirates are. Uh, they're, they're just big whales. Uh, and they don't have your best interest in mind at all. Always remember that. And the fact that these people are looked up to, eh, that's a joke to me. Uh, Stephen Pollock, I appreciate you watching. Thanks. And uh, um, if I could you tell me if spot price for 90% silver pre is a good deal? Uh, it is for one. You know what? One ounce generic and ten ounce generic prices have come down enough. They're they're close enough to the price of ninety percent now that I would recommend either one or the other. Uh, I do like ninety percent, but you know, given a choice, if ninety percent and and one ounce rounds and ten ounce bars were the exact same price premium, I'd go with the one and ten ounce bars uh, over the ninety percent. As much as I like ninety, uh, but that's you know, again, if the price was similar or or real close. Um, that's my opinion. You know, if ones and tens are bringing, if 90% is like way cheaper and ones and tens are, uh, and other type of silver products are, are anywhere from a couple dollar to a couple bucks over more, I'd still recommend 90. But uh, premiums are coming down, folks. So there are better deals out there for now. That could change any moment, though. Uh, thanks for watching, Joey and Linda and Tropical uh, and David. Uh, the fines are generally 10%. Yeah, we were talking about the fines at the. Uh, Jamie Demon and his band of pirates paid uh, for manipulating the price of gold, factually manipulating it, and they threw the trader under the bus as well. Uh, if you like, hit the thumb up. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Again, you guys, uh, Hempke looked like a hardware salesman. That's not nice. Hey, look, I, you haven't seen a picture of me yet. I look like a troll, so uh, no, I'm only kidding. Uh, I don't know what I look like. Some people might think I look like a troll, but... Uh, yeah, I, I don't really, I've, I've read some of his stuff, and, and granted he works for Sprott, and his, his job, like my job, is to promote our businesses, uh, so I kind of get it, but I haven't seen him, but uh, I like his stuff, and like you said, it's not his fault, uh, just like me, it's not my fault. Uh, thanks for watching me, Battleborn, I'll try not to stutter that much, stutter and do my ums, um, and I appreciate you watching, I really do, Bisa, thanks for sharing, I appreciate it. Um, in my shop, do I set prices at live spot plus premium uh, or the previous? No, I use the live spot, uh, uh, live spots. Now, that's something I've done a video on if you look at my videos in the past. Spots are different. Like if you look at uh, the Atmax JM or SD Bullion, they use different spots that are often higher than the spots you see. Uh, I guess there's a reason for that comp competition, making it look like you're more competitive, the price is lower. I'm not sure where they get their spot prices from sometimes. Sometimes they seem spot on, sometimes they seem to be too high. Uh, I'm not by $10 or so, and silver by I don't know how much. Uh, but yeah, I do use uh, uh, current spot price plus or minus, whatever the premium is. Uh, Ed, thanks for watching. I appreciate it, and uh, I appreciate you, your, your family doing business with me. If you're ever down my way, please look me up for sure. Uh, Big Water says, when all Western countries experience inflation and supply disruption because of the, uh, yep, what kind of impact does that have on precious metals? 
Uh, well, we're already seeing it right now, and we've been seeing it for the last couple of years. I mean, silver's made its new uh, uh, trend up into its average area in the mid 20s, and we're probably going to see it go up from there. Uh, gold as well, we're going to probably see over two grand at some point here soon. Uh, every country is experiencing the same, and the Fed probably owns BlackRock. Yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier. I don't know if they own BlackRock, but uh, the president's working group, as Ted Butler has mentioned before, and uh, other people have mentioned. Um, uh, there is a secretive group that uh, control that manipulates the, the price of uh, gold, silver, stocks, bonds, all that stuff, and they use a vast amount of money that they have to do it. Uh, end games, and uh, uh, they reward these companies for doing it. So I don't think they own them, but I think that these companies do work for the government uh, in some secretive deals. That's my opinion. All right, let's get to the best deals out there. The best deals for uh, silver are silver premiums come down dramatically. If you take silver eagles out of the equation, uh, the price is still ridiculous on those. Um, uh, almost all the products, even maple leaves, have come down. Uh, but uh, one ounce and ten ounce and hundred ounce generic bars are available, folks. That's what I'm going to recommend you buy, other than ninety percent. And you can pick this stuff up generally for under four fifty per ounce. Uh, I forget what my premiums are at right now, but they've gone down quite a bit. Uh, much better deals out there. Again, with prices being up, does that mean a lot of people are going to come in and buy, and all of a sudden the supplies are going to suck up and premiums are going to go up again? That I can't tell you, but right now premiums are down. Uh, pick up anything you can buy for less than a five dollar ounce per premium. I'd rather see you at uh, four and a quarter or less. Uh, and the closer you get to that zero point, the better. Uh, with gold, uh, best deals out there, or anything that you can pay eighty bucks an ounce or or less for per you know per premium over the uh, price of gold, eighty bucks or less. And uh, uh, anything over that, uh, there's deals for, again, bars are a great deal. Uh, if you want to get into coins, you know, I think Cougar is the next best deal out there. They're around 95 bucks over, something like that off the top of my head. Premiums are down, folks. No excuse not to buy. You can't say premiums are too high right this now or at this moment. Uh, again, Gold Eagles, I still think the premiums are too high. Maples are a touch too high. Uh, but uh, premiums have come down. There is product available as well. How long that lasts for? Who knows? Uh, one of the things I advertise, and some of you new folks are listening to my videos know um, or don't know, is that I'm a local brick and mortar only. I do not do online sales. Um, I don't ship anything. You have to physically come in to see me, uh, and I advertise for my local peeps to beat the big online sellers, JM, SD, and at Max Bullion. Uh, great companies, uh, great online companies, as far as I know. Uh, however, uh, I like to get that money myself. I don't want people in my community ship sending their money out of town. Either should any other local coin dealer uh, or local bullion dealer. You got to be competitive with these guys, folks. They're the big three out there. And uh, if your overhead's right, uh, you do have a big advantage over those companies. Is that you have personal service that you can give them. No matter how hard the online tr companies try, they don't have personal service. They may have good prices, but it's easy for local coin stores to beat their prices, like me. Uh, so my my whole thing is uh, again my whole thing is selfish I want the business for myself I don't want my local customers giving their money to some company in Iowa or somewhere else I want that money myself and what do I do with that money I spend that money local I, I keep it local I have employees that, that, that rent apartments and, and and own homes and go to the grocery store and shop at your businesses if you're local you know if you own the local tackle store if you own the local I visit you and I spend my money there uh, surfing. I like surfing. I spend my money at surf places. I spend my money at the local grocery stores, at the guys that fix this thing. Uh, uh, you know, my AC guy who lives in town, he spent, keep that money local. I don't care what it is. Uh, Amazon, get rid of your Amazon. I didn't get rid of my Amazon, so I can't tell you to, but buy, do as much local business as you can. I can't tell you how important that is for our communities. Well, that's really about it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Wear Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the sea. Call me anytime at 954-493-8811 between the hours of 10 and 4. And uh, we can help you out and give you uh, uh, what the best deals are and give you great advice. Like I said, the big companies can't do that. We can. And uh, so should your local dealer. Try to find one. Hey, thanks for watching. Have yourself a great day. And let's see what happens tomorrow. Talk to you soon.